From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. One more corner pocket. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunter Vandy and Corey Clark. What is up, everybody? It is Wake Up War Champ, presented by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill, Tallahassee, Florida. Coming up on today's show, the sky is the limit, the roof is the ceiling. How high can Florida State go after a bonkers weekend of college football? Let's use some transitive property. We'll talk Zaxby's indescribably good player of the week and get to the rest of those Renegade Express questions. As always, though, we are brought to you by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill, Tallahassee, Florida, cptallybar.com, the website, phone app, QR code, or sorry, camera app on your phone, QR code, go right to the website, you can place your order online, grab it to go, hang out, it is Monday, build your own burger with some delicious Angus beef in that patty, uh, treat yourself to the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill, always a great time, wordchant.com, if you're listening to us on YouTube this podcast, why don't you hit the thumbs up, why don't you subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel, it's totally free, and if you want all the good stuff, just go to the website, warchant.com. It's only a buck. Great column by Corey up this weekend. Really making you dream the big dream. We'll talk about it for several minutes today, I'm sure. Uh, but without further ado, here's Corey to welcome himself in now. Corey, what's up? What's up, Corey? How are you, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. I hope uh, some people in Tallahassee got to go to Corner Pocket on Sunday for the first weekend, first Sunday of uh, NFL football. Mm. Stephanie was there mm. and got to see her Browns win on a miracle. Um, and yeah, so it was, uh, it's always good to be a corner pocket on a Sunday. I miss it. It's been a long time and I was up in Atlanta with no, um, I don't even get the NFL network offered on my cable. Not, not just, I don't get NFL red zone. I don't even get the NFL network. What? Uh, I'm killing it up here. I'm killing it. AT&T verse, baby. Love it. But don't even offer it. Call to see if I can order it. No, we don't offer that. Awesome. But so do you anyway, have, do you have the ACC network? Oh, I do, man. I've had the ACC network for eons back right. in the uh, the Packer and Durham days. All right. Can't have everything, the... Corey. Be thankful for what you have. Can't yeah. have everything. <laughs> Good call. Good call. All right. So Florida State did not play a game this weekend, but they won. Uh, they won real big. Uh, I guess mm. part of it will kind of dovetail into your column, Corey, where you wrote about what this weekend could mean. Again, unless it's week two, uh, but it's time to maybe start taking some stock and in inventory of what's going on across the country. Shout out to all the Jimbo Fisher haters out there on the podcast. Uh, A&M goes down to App State Yikes. in College Station. John James, what are you doing, Bubby? Um, I mean, they can't even get off the field against App State. Just just get or off the field. Or stay on the field. More yeah. aptly, they can't stay on the field on offense. Horrible, horrible. Uh, my guy Scott Frost finally gone to Nebraska. That doesn't really concern yeah, any of us here. Uh, but Florida showing how terribly overranked they were, being ranked 12th in the nation after beating Utah. Uh, falling to Kentucky. Shout out Mark Stoops. Listen, I hope Mike Norvell works out, man. But, man, Mark Stoops is making a case for himself for being a dude that, that might have been undervalued in some circles when it comes to judging coaching talent, man. Kentucky, just a sound, solid football team, taking it to Florida in the swamp. Uh, and then closer to us, more relevant now in the here and now, man. Louisville did not look all that great against UCF, though they did win, which I think is good. We. Yeah. You know, I'd rather beat a one and one team. That probably will help us be ranked after going to three and zero. Boston College looked absolutely impotent against Virginia Tech. Uh, those are your next two opponents. Uh, you're thinking you, you have a real good shot being four and zero. I, I don't know enough really about NC State at this juncture. Saw Ryan Finley or not Ryan Finley. Uh, it, that was a while ago. Devin, uh, my guy, Devin Leary. Leary Devin Leary. Leary. You got it. You nailed thank it. You. Six touchdowns. Good for him. But it was like Charleston Southern. Yeah, Clemson. Maybe they don't have a quarterback controversy. I don't know. Lot, lots to get to, but I, I don't know. Was it just the enjoyment of looking at what happened to Jimbo? Obviously, anytime Florida loses, just an amazing night. Just just shows you just the goodness in this world, and there is somebody shining down on us, even though for some reason he won't let Scott Frost be successful as alma mater. But then to see Louisville and and, and BC, two games that you might have thought were fifty fifty games, maybe sixty forty in your favor. I don't know, man, like 70-30 at this point, 80-20. I just I have a hard time thinking Florida State's not going to find a way to win 9-10, games now, Corey. I'm that drunk. Oh, all right, I'm okay, that drunk. Nice. Correct me. Correct um, me if I'm Well, wrong. no, I, I think, you know, when I wrote the column about the weekend, um, and go read it on War Chant, folks. I'm not going to give it all away. I'm not going to give it all away here for free. You wanted that insight, go read it. Um, it's a but, buck. Uh, it's only a it's buck. It's a buck, guys. It is a $1, and you're going to you, – don't be a fan later. Seriously, yeah. they're, if they go 4-0 – and they're 19th in the country. Hey, and the coaches poll, they're 26th. They're the, they're the most receiving votes in the coaches poll, Florida State is. 
that hasn't been a while. Um, so yeah, if that happens, uh, you they're know, if they're four, four no, they're above nineteen, Corey. I know you're just throwing a number. They, they might there. be. They might be fourteen. You're right. I don't know. I don't know. They beat Louisville and BC. I don't know if they're going to shoot up the the rankings. But the point being, when you look around the country, other than Georgia, like you know Alabama, if Texas had had their starting quarterback, I feel like Texas wins that game comfortably. He's good, huh? Quinn he Ewers. was he was really impressive. Yeah. And once they put in the backup, especially when the backup had a bum ankle, they couldn't. They knew they couldn't throw the ball, so they just stacked the run. And then Texas is all world running back. You know, it's hard to run against Alabama when they got eight guys there. So uh, Texas could do next to nothing offensively. Well, if they had Ewers back there, is it Ewers or Ewers? Ewers, Ewers. Yeah. Like, uh, um, they, then uh, yeah, they they can't do that. And I think there's you know there's a chance Texas puts up thirty five. Um, and they controlled Alabama's offense for majority of the game. And the point, I mean, Texas has a lot of four and five star kids. Let's not kid ourselves. It's not like that was App State A and M there. But if you don't play well, or if you get a little bit unlucky, you can lose to anybody on your schedule. And I'm talking about Florida State. I'm talking about just about everybody not named like what Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State. Like Alabama could play. I don't even know. Like if Alabama's playing Missouri. Alabama could play a C plus game and probably beat Missouri comfortably. Yeah. Georgia, scores. same thing. Georgia could play Florida State and not play well, and I think win by ten or fourteen points. Even if Florida State played particularly well, it, it just the talent disparity is there. But everywhere else, and and for our purposes, everybody on this schedule, if Florida State plays well, plays well, they can beat anybody on the schedule. I fully believe that, including that team at the end of the year after watching what they looked like against Kentucky. On the, the flip side, though, is still the flip side. If Florida State plays poorly, turns it over a bunch, can't convert third downs, gives up bust in the secondary, they can lose to anyone, including the uh, the two that are coming up. I like, man, man they I think they're more talented than Louisville and Boston College. Clear, I think they're I, far I and mean, away more talented. They, maybe I, something I don't know. bad is going to happen. Florida State will will be doing. There will be some. I, I I can't even think the right way to talk about it or, or to discuss it, but. Something will have to go terribly awry for them to lose any of these next two games. I believe, like they will I be, would, they will, they will lose the game. They will not get beat. They will lose the game. Florida State. They, I don't think they'll get outplayed. They will do stuff that will just make you shake your head and be like, "What the hell? I thought we got this out of our system." Which I do think they have it out of their system. I think they'll be four and zero. I think Louisville. It's just that it, you know they. When was the last time they won up there? That Thursday night. Like uh, with, with Jameis, eh, Will, Willie Taggart went. Oh up yeah, there that's in right. I'm sorry. The big win of Willie's, but they're never easy, right? Sorry. Since what, Louisville what did, got, since what did Dante Louisville got Jackson the, say, "Oops, I'm sorry" or something. What was uh, there's some some funny tagline? Dontavis Jackson said, "Oh, oh well, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, well, yeah." yeah. So, so oh, since cool. Louisville's been in the league, it's not easy to win up there. So. Um, it's not going to. You I mean, saw Louisville play UCF, man. I, I know they got ten stops in a row, but that's not the eighty-five Bears. UCF doesn't have a quarterback. Louisville yeah. has an undersized three-four they run, which is well. And they lost their they lost their best player too. Um, their, their 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 best defensive lineman, I think, was the kid that transferred it from Arizona State, um, and apparently he's out for the year. So they played that game, and he didn't even play in that game against UCF. And if you saw the first part of that game, um, and we'll get into the overall. You know the overall narrative of the whole country, but for Louisville, for specific Florida State purposes, you know Louisville got UCF ran up and down the field on them the first three drives, really the first three and a half drives. They had another touchdown um, that they got wiped out by a hold, uh, a pretty needless hold actually, um, that would have been like a seventy yard pass that the kid held for some reason, and then they end up missing the field goal and then didn't score again. But Louisville's, you're, you're right, Louisville's run defense does not look good at all. Um, but what they did in that game was like, well, we can't sit back and let this team just run all over us, especially not with that quarterback. So we're gonna bl we're gonna run blitz on every down, every play, and literally they had they had eight guys in the line of scrimmage, sometimes ten guys in the line of scrimmage. In every play, they were bringing at least five guys, usually six or seven, knowing, daring the Plumley kid to beat him with his arm, and he couldn't. So the test, and it's a great test. Is because they're going to do the same. I, I can't imagine they're going to sit back against Jordan Travis because when they sat back, no matter whether it was the Syracuse quarterback or uh, Plumley, if they just sat back in coverage, they got destroyed. They had given up 45 points in about five quarters. Then they decided, you know what? We're just bringing the house. Like, what, what do we got to lose? And all of a sudden, UCF didn't score again. They went 10 straight drives without a point. So that's exactly how they're going to play Florida State. And it's a matter of oh, number good one. Luck. Good luck yeah, that's that. what I'm saying. Can, can you can your running back slip through a run blitz and turn a you know one two yard gain into a seventy yard gain? 
because that can happen. And I think Florida State has better running backs than UCF. And I know they have a better quarterback. So that that should really help. And your receivers got to go make plays. They will. Because it's going to be a lot of Pokey Wilson versus Jarvis Brownlee. A lot of it. They put that dude on an island. They put the other corner on an island. And they say, good luck. And UCF just couldn't beat them. Uh, but that said, man, Florida State's a one-point favorite, I think. It's one a pick One and a half. One and a half. On the road, it's a pick on essentially, night, right? That's, yep. that's but, a... No, I mean, it's fine, but it's a pick That's That's what it is. So you wouldn't be stunned if they lost this game. I Cunningham... Would. If he, if he could somehow throw the ball, like he was off. I thought he was really bad throwing the ball um, on Friday night, but his legs are ridiculous. I mean, he's yeah. a really good runner. He takes a lot of hits. That's what you got to do is get him on the ground and make sure he pays for running the ball. But uh, you're not trying to hurt him. We're not, we're not going there. There's no bounty on the kid like LSU apparently had yeah. on Jordan Travis with that yeah. spearing. But you, you want to make sure he can't, he can't beat you with his legs. And if he does try to beat you with his legs, make him feel it. Um, cause he takes a bunch of hits, man. He's a tough kid and he's not all that. He's not like Tim Tebow or Cam Newton out there. He's not a huge guy. Um, so you got to make him pay for running it because Satterfield even said afterwards, um, yeah, we got back to our roots a little bit with Malik running and it's like, well, that's their offense. That kid's legs is a big part of their offense and you got to try to keep them under control. But when you look at Louisville's offense, they've scored what three touchdowns total in two games against not great defenses. 13 and a half points they've scored two games. Yeah. That's average. Uh, against not great defenses. It's not like they played Georgia and Clemson back-to-back. -back. Um, and then, you know, their defense looks like you can run on them. It does seem to be a favorable matchup. I would be disappointed if Florida State didn't win this game, but the overall point is, look around, man. There are no gimme wins. For a team like Florida State that's, that's anywhere from, I would say anywhere from, what, 7 to 40 in the country. If you're ranked 7th to 40th, you can lose almost to anyone on your schedule. A&M proved that. Notre yeah. Dame proved that. Um, Florida proved that. Although Kentucky's, I think, look just like a straight-up better team. Kentucky's a better team. That's the thing. Yeah. I think Florida State's a better team than Louisville. I think Florida State's a better yeah, team than Boston Yeah, but better, better, teams lose to, better teams lose to worse teams a lot. Um, that, that does happen. It so does. you've got to play well. It you, does. You've got to play well, but what should give Florida State fans hope is when you look around the rest of this country, not just the conference, the country, who are you looking at that says, by God, they're, they're so much better than us? Just the talent, the way they compete, how they blow everybody out. Like, nobody blows anybody out. Yeah. Florida State, they're not close to Georgia. We get that. They're not close to Ohio State. You've got you've to put lay down a lot of track to get to get the those programs. But they're, they're at a point now where they're, I mean, I would say they're competitive with 99% of the co country. Yeah. yeah. The, the 1%, nope, they're still not there yet. Still not there yet. Understood. But the rest of the country, man, that's uh, the, in the and certainly the conference. You know, you can you can win every game left on your schedule. You would not be stunned by it, only because it's hard to win in college football now. It reminds me, and I wrote about it. Um, it you watch any of these NFL games on Sunday, Aslan? I saw your Falcons melt down. I mean, of course they did. They all. It doesn't matter if you have a seventeen point lead with twelve minutes to go, or you have a one point lead with four minutes to go. It all they all come down to the final two minutes, almost all of them, yeah. almost all of them, and that's kind of where college football now is for the other ninety nine percent. Yeah, Georgia can beat Oregon by forty six points. Alabama is going to beat whoever they play next week by fifty probably. But for the rest of us, this is life now. So if you play, if you play well, and you play cl and you play well in the big moments, and you stay close, you give yourself a chance, and then you play well when it matters, like blocking an extra point. Um, you can win everything. You can win every game left on your schedule. You're not going to because you're going to make some mistakes when it matters. You're going to be in a lot of ton of close games. But, man, this is this is the new reality of college football, right? That's why I love the 12-team playoff. That's why I love the 12-team playoff, man. It's 24 teams getting to compete. Because it's you can't, in this day and age of college football, you can't just kill a, a kill a team for a loss. It's like Packers fans being upset right now. Like, oh, there goes the season. We just got destroyed by the Vikings. Or the so Niners. You know, I guess, job. yeah, the, the Niners too. I guess we're not any good. How do we lose to the Bears? Well, yeah, I mean, it's one game. You got a lot left. And that's kind of how college football is now. You almost have to reassess how you view this thing. Just hope you win the close games because that's all the good F NFL teams. They go, what, 12 and 5? And I would guess 10 of those wins are one possession games. Kind of feel like that's where college football is now. MyBookie.ag, the promo code WARCHANT, still active, still valid. If you use it, your first deposit will be doubled. 
and get started early this week. Thursday night, big-time matchup in the NFL with the Chargers taking on the Chiefs. And then Friday night, of course, the Knolls taking on Louisville. Uh, why does it say 5 third on my screen here? They must be like in mountain time over in my bookie land. But right now, as Corey pointed out, it is a pick em between the Knolls and the Cards. A Florida State, though, on the money line, minus 123, Louisville plus 100, the over-under 54 and a half points. I didn't do well on my picks last weekend, Corey. I said uh, that Bama was going to blow out Texas, uh, that Navy was going to hang with Memphis, and that my Ooh. South Alabama Jaguars were going to win, which they did, but I got two out of three wrong, which is just terrible. So I'll defer to you this coming week. But those are your lines when it comes to Florida State over at MyBookie. Again, use that promo code WARCHANT. When you go to MyBookie, you'll get your first deposit doubled instantly on the spot. NFL also up and active. Again, that Thursday night game, Chargers Chiefs, get some action down over at mybookie.ag. All right, Corey, I agreed with most of everything you said. Maybe, maybe everything you said. Oh, but there just you go. Thanks, man. For the sake of that. having a show, uh, need to fill some time, which, by the way, speaking of shows, we'll have in the coop at 7 p.m. on this Monday. It's a little bit of a different schedule with travel, Friday night game going on, so uh, coop will be available 7 p.m., Live on YouTube, taking your questions in the coop. Uh, also done in partnership with Rising Spear. If you're feeling generous, go to risingspear.com. Give them your money uh, on a perpetual or a, not perpetual, but a uh, ongoing basis. Or you can do a one-time gift. Uh, they're helping out over 100 Florida State athletes across nine different sports. Our show will go live Wednesday. Thursday will be a travel day for Corey and myself. So we'll try to get something for you folks on Friday to get you ready for the Louisville game. Wet the beak. I did want to go back and talk about a little bit about Louisville. It was uh, Jermaine Lowell, 6'2", 320, was their starting nose tackle. He's now given way due to a season-ending injury to Desmond Tell, who's 6'1", 296. Um, and, I, you know, I know you simplified it there, Corey, about they'll try to do to Florida State what they did against UCF, but obviously Florida State has a better quarterback. I, mean, I don't know if they can even do that. They, I think they – won't they have to play Florida State straight up? to a certain degree, because they are a legitimate passing attack now, Florida State. I mean, they're, they're still run first, or they still will be 55-45 run. But, yeah, go ahead. Good luck putting eight, nine guys in the box when you got a six foot seven guy, a six foot four dude, a 5'11 guy who's slippery and can get open, or you roll out Pokey who can make one-handed catches. Um, I, I Again, man, this is not some unstoppable force, uh, Florida State, but I think right now, man, this matchup just – I. Florida State's going to have to do some crazy stuff like turn the ball over. And I don't know, man. I mean, I guess Malik Cunningham is going to have to go Jaden Daniels to the second power to probably beat you. But let's focus more on how they're going to defend Florida State. I mean, do you really think it's as simple as Louisville just taking away the run and then daring Jordan to beat them? Because I think that's just picking your poison. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think Lu yeah, but I mean, you're, you you got to pick up poison. And I think you're, you're, you're thinking it's harder to – uh, you know, if we just sit back, I mean, worse quarterbacks than uh, than Jordan Travis marched right down the field, and and I think worse offenses than Florida State's uh, went down the field on you, and then you decided finally um, we can't do this anymore with our run defense. Like literally, there I think even now because they gave up so much against UCF before they decided to change the way they were defending, I think they're 116th in the country in rush defense. Louisville is 117th, something like that. Um, and, you know, yeah, so they're going to do everything they can to not just get mauled up front and just give up 250 yards rushing. So they're going to say they're just going to be over aggressive. I, I can't imagine they're just going to sit back. And also, this isn't 2000, late 2013 Jameis or 2019 Burrow. I mean, jo Jordan Travis had a nice game. I think he's a good quarterback. You know, they're not – I don't think Louisville's, like, bought into the point where, ah, we can't blitz this kid. He'll, he'll pick us apart. He, I don't think he has that reputation yet. I don't think he's proven it enough yet. To, to be worried about that. So they're just going to, you know, you go down swinging, man. Um, you don't want to just sit back and let a team go up and down the field on you with, with very limited uh, aggression. Um, what, what you you want to be aggressive and at least force the issue. So I think that's what they're going to do. Um, I'd be su surprised if they uh, if they did not. And then Cunningham, yeah, man, Cunningham's better than Jane Daniels, in my opinion. And Jane Daniels ran you ragged especially in that fourth quarter. So I, I'm not – until I see this defense uh, get off the field. Much better receivers, though. Does that matter? Sure. Yo, it absolutely does. I, I wasn't impressed really with much of Louisville's receiving game or, in fact, their running backs. I mean, their running game is their quarterback, which is not a great way to get through a season. Um, but, but you know, they, you know, I think Cunningham can make enough plays. And, and, frankly, if they watch the fourth quarter of the LSU game, 
they're going to feel pretty good about going up against this Florida State defense. Like this Florida State defense has to prove that in a spread formation, in a hurry up, they can get off the field. Um, because yeah, they, they've got a bad taste in their mouth from that game where they gave up three straight touchdowns to end the game after being so good. So let's wait and see what this Florida State defense looks like rebounding after 12 days before we you know, think it's going to be a, a um, you know, Louisville's going to struggle to score 17 or so. Like, you know, Louisville's, Louisville's put a bunch of points on you uh, the last, really almost every time you've played them, but certainly the last two years. This kid has put up a lot of points on you. Um, you've got, you've just got to play better than you did, certainly in that fourth quarter against LSU. But really, um, if you stop the run, you make him beat you with his arm. If he does it, okay, man, I guess you don't let him know. Hmm. His receivers aren't good enough, I don't think, that you, you can't be giving up 300 yards passing to this kid or 350 or something oh, like yeah, that. No um, you just can't. I think they um, actually have some decent receivers. I think actually they have some decent athletes, but I don't think they're to the caliber of LSU, though. No, I just I, – I, they might. I just – I did nothing about their, their performance on Friday night right, right. overly impressed me. Uh, just the same with their, their defense. I, I wasn't overly impressed with their defense. It just – they were playing a quarterback that literally was a wide receiver playing quarterback that couldn't, that couldn't make the throws that were wide open. Uh, you hope that Jordan Travis in year eleven or twelve, however long he's been in college, will be able to will be able to uh, pick them apart. But yeah, I, I think, man, if Jordan can have a good game and can handle the blitz, because I think they're coming um, and make those throws. And and look, if if Norvell and Alex that can scheme up some stuff, because they know what L, I think they know what a Louisville is going to do. They've got two two games of film now, um, and you do have advantages. And you should have some advantages. That that um, I, I think it's a race to thirty. You hope this team doesn't give up 30 points to a to an offense that scored three touchdowns total in two games. But teams get better. Uh, they, you know, you find a rhythm. They're they're going to have some confidence after that win. So, um, but I I think the first team to 30, maybe the only team to 30, is uh is going to win this game. I guess you don't want to dream the big dream. I tried, everybody. I tried to make your Monday awesome, but Corey's bringing us down. Corey's well, we, if we down. go back and talk about uh, Jimbo Fisher. Losing well, to hey, a, hey, hey, okay, a team enough. that we, gave we up talked, enough, enough about Jim. We talked about Jim uh, already. Can we move gave on? up Next sixty-three topic. points <laughs> to North Carolina, and my man forty scores and one seven, quarter, forty and one quarter, and they score seven points. Like they're, they're only t- their other touchdown was a kick return. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, I love watching uh, Jimbo's post game because it just takes me back to, and he's always good after a loss. But there's always these explanations, like yeah, we had a block here, we missed a block there, uh, we we got a good drive going. And he's like, we had a good drive going there, and they got got killed by a penalty. All of a sudden, it's first and fifteen. It's like Jimbo, it's App State. Yeah. First and fifteen shouldn't derail a an entire drive. And also, you can't say that you picked up one first down and you got a good drive going. <clears throat> like, there's no. They had eight first downs. Is that what you said? Is that what you texted? Something like that. Yeah. Eight or nine first downs. I mean, that's that's nuts um, against a team that gave up sixty three points. So I, I wonder. And look, that's a, that's another point though. There, there's nobody listening to this that thinks nine. that. Sorry, nine first downs, hundred eighty six oh, total yards. Uh, sorry, I shorted you, Jimbo. You had nine first downs. Um, you know, it's not like anybody listening to this thinks that A and M's going to go three and nine or two and ten. They'll figure some stuff out. They're too talented not to. But that's kind of it's the it's the frustrating part of college football now, but also the beauty of it. Is that if you do play poorly, and you're not clicking, uh, there you you can lose. Same token, if you're App State and your defense plays well and your offense makes enough plays, you are Marshall. You, you can go beat a team you have no business beating. And you know I, I don't. The beauty now of this of this season, I think, for Florida State is there's nobody on this schedule, at least right now, as we talk on September 12th, that you you think, man, they have no business beating that team. Oh, yeah. I think every team on their schedule they have business beating. Yeah. Because they're I think they're. You know, they, they they should be in every game. It should be in the fourth quarter. And I do think they have a good quarterback. Um, and I think they got some playmakers. And you need those when you're trying to win close games. I worry about the kicker. I worry about the kicker because you're going to be in a lot of close games. And we saw, heavens to Betsy, did we see on Sunday, um, but also on Saturday, what, uh, I mean, did you, the A&M kid that kicked it, I don't think anybody touched that ball, did they? <laughs> I don't think so, no. He just kicked the dirt. Out here kicking the dirt. I mean, the the clump of dirt almost went as far as the ball. Uh, that was crazy. So he missed the bejesus out of that one. Um, who was the other kid that just missed it? So he had a he had a 
uh, late clutch field goal, and he missed the he missed the really. Oh, it was the the BYU and the Baylor game later that uh, night. They they was just trading missed field goals. So you man, if you don't have a field goal kicker you trust in this day and age, eh, that's I mean, that's a huge hindrance. It doesn't. What what are kickers? I mean, shoot. I mean, Alex Mastermano and Ryan Fitzgerald can probably just you know when they play. Billy Napier in Florida, that last game in November, they can just mm. stay home with their families for Thanksgiving. They're they're not going to use it. Neither of those coaches are going to use kickers. They're just going to go. By the way, time. how? If, no lie. What are we? What's Napier doing? Like I haven't gone on any of the Florida message boards. I didn't go on any of their sites or anything, or even really get on Twitter after the game. Like, what were people thinking about those fourth down calls? I don't know. They probably so they they were down by you use. they were down by seven, I think, with with nine minutes to go on their side of the field. Like it wasn't fourth and an inch. It was like fourth and four, yeah. And they go for it and don't get it. And it and it also wasn't the game wasn't fifty to forty eight. Well, Kentucky's it wasn't like, kicker missed that one too. Like they they, they could have put the nail in the coffin right there. Yeah, but he missed that kick. Yeah, they he got bailed out because yeah. the kid missed it. But like you you could have, like it wasn't like it was fifty to forty eight and Kentucky hadn't stopped you all night. Your offense was doing nothing. So why in the world would you think okay this four yard play we'll get it? And because I mean we're at our forty, but we we've been picking these up all night. Like you didn't have anything. The kid, the quarterback was playing horribly. Um, it was just really odd. I, I, he had to do it the second time, I guess, because he had already done it the first time. But those two, those two fourth down decisions, especially the first one, deep in his own territory, because you flipped the field. Then Kentucky has the ball at their own fifteen. But anyway, um, this isn't you know this isn't wake up Gators. But that kid did not look. And that's the other thing about college football or just football in general is how great Richardson looked. First round pick. Heisman potential sleeper Heisman candidate <laughs> right. doing spinny do's and crazy plays against uh, against Utah and then the next uh, the, the next game he looks like uh, Skylar Morningwick oh. like just horrible <laughs> or Trayon Harris pick John Brantley pick whoever you want he just looked horrible oh. um, and that's that's football man you can't you can't make decisions definitive decisions on one game or really even two um, so that's why, you know, these, these you. next two for I Florida state, you. right? It's a, yeah. you will know so much more about what this team is after we see how they perform in their first true road game. Cause it is going to be a road game ups. again against a team that's, that's lathered up, right? You know, yeah. listen, it was a benefit to playing Duquesne and LSU, not playing a football game. And then, you know, we've talked about and documented how close you were to maybe facing catastrophe, which you're not. So Louisville's had two games. Uh, one where they were thumped, one where they had to kind of battle back and figure out a way. So they're, they'll be lathered up at home Friday night. You have not particularly played well in a true road game. The New Orleans game was a legit neutral site game. When you did good stuff, you were lifted by your fans. So uh, they're not going to have that luxury against Louisville. But, I mean, Louisville right now, man, 84th in total offense, 88th in total defense. Their scoring yeah. offense, 122 in the country. Um their fourth down conversion, 108th in the country. Their red zone offense, 123rd in the country. Uh, just, you know, that's, you know, you, you, you got to play the schedule you have. If that's the team you have to play on a Friday night on the road, I like that. I like that much better than, I don't know, like having to play Kentucky on the road in Lexington, you know. Yeah. So I'll, I'll take hey, this team. Well, right. And I, I thought you brought up Mark Stoops, and I thought that was a really good point because um, I kind of compare him to Leonard Hamilton um, because Florida State was very patient with Leonard. Um, cause it's not a basketball school. They were patient with him. He was building, he was building a foundation. Um, they didn't rush him out after not making the tournament for six seasons. They did not rush him out again after he went another four seasons after a run without making the tournament. They appreciated the foundation, the, uh, in the program he had built and it paid off for Florida state basketball in a huge way to the point where I wouldn't call Florida state a basketball school, but Man, it's a it's a pretty good basketball fan base, especially you know those kids, the students really show up. It's a it's a tough atmosphere to play in now, and Stoops has done that with Kentucky. But man, there were some years where you, you know say this, there wasn't, dude. He, man, okay, finish your thought. I don't think there's ever a window for him to legitimately get fired. I just don't man, see it. Man, well, I'm gonna look it up. I'm well, gonna, either or so you look it up. His first season. National championship season for Florida State he goes two wins first year, then he goes five wins back to back years, then seven so, wins back to back right, so years. There you are. So he's five years into his tenure, and he's won twenty six games. He's averaging five point two wins per year after five years. Yeah, but back to back bowl games in years I mean, four and five, man. That's but, at a place like Kentucky, though, Corey. Like I don't know, you're not pulling the plug on a guy. He he improved from year one to year two, stayed stagnant, then he improved. Year four by two wins, stayed stagnant. I mean, that's – I don't know. Again, I think that's 
knowing where you stand in the landscape of your sport, which is I think it is probably a good parallel to maybe Ham. Uh, although, well, man, yeah, it, it is because it's Kentucky football, not Kentucky basketball. There's no way Kentucky basketball would put up with their head coach missing the tournament for six seasons. Yeah. Um, just like maybe, probably, there shouldn't be um, – there There's shouldn't be Florida State there, shouldn't though. be shouldn't put up a guy that wins twenty five games over five years, like that 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 yeah. can't have you can't average five wins a year over five years and be the coach at be the coach at Florida State in football right. like you can at Kentucky. But again, the point being, whoever was making the decisions to keep Mark Stoops saw what he was doing, like they they believed in his what he was doing in the program he was building, and now again they're not going to win a national championship. But they're legitimately a good program. Like, they're not a joke. They are, man. They're solid. They're well coached. I know, I know it sounds cheesy, but if you watch Nebraska play, you watch their oh, defense. Geez. Poorly yeah. coached defense. Just crazy ill-timed blitzes coming from way too far off the ball that you're not going to be able to make at home. Really soft coverages. Man, Kentucky does some cool stuff on offense. They're going under center like it's 1999, which I love. Um, they're, they're a solid, well-coached team, man. They're... Um, they don't shoot themselves in the foot. I like Kentucky. I, I'm kind of envious of what they've built there, but I like where we're at right now. Kirk. Well, don't be envious of that, man. I mean, again, they've. I mean, I know they had a nice season. They're on a nice run, but yeah. in 2020, Kentucky was five and six. Eh, it's COVID year. Come on, man. And then the year before that, they were three and five in the conference. They won eight games, but they're three and five in the conference. So they know what they are. But he's still, even after that win on on uh, on Saturday, he's 30 and 45 in conference. At, at Kentucky, he got more wins years. than Bear Bryant. He's got more wins than Bear Bryant in Lexington, Big Dog. That's right. But thirty, the thirty and forty-five in the conference. He's sixty-one and fifty-three overall, yeah. and thirty and forty-five in conference. But he was allowed. It took him a while, probably too long. But you're right. After the two seven and six seasons, he got him a ten-win season, then eight wins, then back to five wins. But you're not going to fire him then. Then another ten-win season, and now he's two and zero. Oh. But in this day and age, people are so impatient, and deservedly so, with the money they're making or the money you're spending on these guys. If you think it's a bad hire, you've got to know but and get rid of it as soon as possible, like Nebraska did. Yeah, man. But yeah. at the same token, look where Kentucky is now. And what would Kentucky have been if after that second, when they lose the Music City Bowl, to go 7-6 and six again? And my man's got 25 wins in five years. Um, wh where would they have been if they'd have fired him? Yeah. They certainly, I don't think they'd be here. You you just get in a perpetual, we're hired and firing guys. We're Kentucky. Hopefully he'll have an eight-win season, then he'll go somewhere else. Hopefully this guy will have one eight-win season in three years. Now they've got a chance. I mean, they're not going to win the SEC East, most likely. I think Georgia's probably going to handle them pretty well. <laughs> but, I mean, they're the second-best team in the East, perhaps, probably. And maybe the third-best team in the conference, which in the SEC, when the first two are Alabama and Georgia, man, that says something. So kudos to him, number one. But also, it does kind of stress the importance of sometimes, if you truly believe in what the guy is doing, patience is a virtue and stability can be a really big deal. Now, Florida State and Kentucky, are, and I'm not making the argument that, hey, if Norvell goes seven and six the next four years, keep him. Um, but I am saying that that I think it's comparable to what Leonard's built and how they were, they were he, he had a stable program and they were patient with him. But then also, um, you know, in this day and age, I don't know that if you, if they, if, if, if Michael Alford and the people that matter believe in Mike Norvell, then, you know, do you think he's going to be here in eight years and 10 years? Do you think the only way Mike Norvell is coaching in 2030 at Florida State is if he's won a couple of national championships? Yeah, at least one. Yeah, we're not keeping him. I don't know. Is he Mark Richt? That's, I mean, that's, then that's like your best case scenario. Like, if you don't win a national championship at Florida State, then you're hoping you're like, you're Mark Richt at Georgia. Or uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy at uh, Boise, he never won it. Chris Peterson. Well, He's a great coach. A he never won a national you championship. You can't win a national championship at Boise, though. You got a lot more impediments in your way than you do at Florida State, you know, like being an automatic qualifier for like a playoff. Well, sure, sure. But, you know, I mean, look, that guy was awesome. Uh, he's yeah. a really good coach. Um, but, yeah, so I think that's the difference. But I do think that Mark Stoops, I think, is a great example for some of these crazy fan bases, not Florida State, I'm not saying that, uh, some of these crazy fan bases that don't know what they are. Um, like in Nebraska, I mean, Nebraska fired Pelini. And Pelini was winning eight or nine games a year. Now, they, there would be two games a year where they got the snot Tar beat out, out of them. Of them yeah. yeah, but they were, they were winning eight or nine games a year, and Nebraska thought they were bigger and better than that, and they clearly aren't. So, uh, I don't know. I don't even know where I'm going with that. I just It's, it's crazy what Kentucky has become. I, I assume North Carolina basketball fans feel about Florida State basketball the way I do about Kentucky football right now. Like, this is nuts. 
This is incredible what Stoops is doing. Um, because it's, I mean, they, they really, Florida was lucky to be in that game. Like Kentucky, I thought, just kind of dominated that game for long stretches. They were clearly the better team with better players and better coached, I thought. so. And it goes to show you, I know the recruiting rankings matter. I'm not saying you want to keep recruiting in the 30s and the 20s. Um, but, you know, Florida's got probably more four stars and five stars, obviously, than Kentucky does. But Kentucky's guys can play. And, you know, the, 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 the parity, the, the margin of error, the parity has gotten to a point, it's so tiny that, um, you know, if you play well or don't play well, you're going to lose. And that, that's just remarkable that Kentucky, Kentucky right now is a better football program than Florida State oh, and Florida. Stop. stop. No, I'm saying, I'm saying okay. like the, when you look at the last five years, man, they've had two 10 win seasons and they're now ranked 11th in the country. So I'm talking about in recent history, Kentucky, just like Florida State, is a better basketball program than, I don't know, man, name anyone um, other than like eight or 10 teams over the last five or six years. Kentucky has done that in football. That's remarkable. Kentucky's been a better program than A&M. I mean, it's nuts. It's just, it's, it's crazy. So kudos to him, man. That's awesome. And shout out to, uh, well, Clint Trickett, number one. I didn't realize he was the OC at uh, Marshall. Yeah. That's a huge win for him. Um, and then Kalen, Kalen LeBourne, man, that, or Kalen Laburn. Man, that's awesome to see him playing like that and running like that. It kind of makes you wonder, what if? Mm. What if uh, he had, well, stayed here and things had gone a different path for him at Florida State? But that's awesome, man, because I didn't even realize, I'll be honest with you, I forgot he was in college football. <laughs> it's been so long. He came in with Cam Akers. He did. That's crazy. He came in with Cam Akers. Cam Akers in his second year in the league and is a Super Bowl champ. Third. This kid's still playing college third. football. I think third year in the league. Yeah, that's right. He's in his third year in the league and is a Super Bowl champ. And then this kid's still playing college football, and they came in the same recruiting class. Uh, so kudos. I mean, again, that's a testament to staying with it. And uh, man, that's that's awesome that he he played like that, and it's apparently that kind of player. The clutch shots, the biggest hits. It's time for the Zaxby's indescribably good player of the week. You heard the man. It is time for the Zaxby's indescribably good player of the week. Let's go out to Scottsdale, Arizona, the Mirabelle Club. Beautiful Tom Fazio design golf course. The Knowles, Trey Jones's boys, going to ham out there. But I'm going to pick Cole Anderson, who goes 65, 64, 66 in the three-day tournament. Just absolutely on fire. That's 15 under for the weekend in helping the Knowles finish third, was it, Corey, at the tournament? Third, so yep. Boom. My guy, Cole Anderson. He's my Zaxby's indescribably good player of the week. 15 under at a Tom Fazio design course. Break the kid up. I'm going. Uh, I'm going to stay on the. Uh, what do we call them? The the non revenue. The Olympic sports. Yes. Golf's an Olympic sport. Correct. And uh, so is women's soccer. Look, not not the best of starts to the for the women's soccer. They weren't terrible. They they started with a win and two ties or draws as we call them, Aslan. Mm. But by God, the last week they just went off. They beat Florida five to zero on the same day that Florida State beat LSU in football. So you might have missed it. They beat the Gators in Gainesville five zero. They beat Florida Gulf Coast four days later, 5-0. Five and nil. then stop me if you've heard this before. Then they, sorry, nil. And then on Sunday, they played Rice in Houston and beat them 5-0. That's three straight matches of 5-0. And I'm going to go with, we're going to say, uh, how do we say it? Beata? Beata. Beata. Beata Olsen. Uh, Florida Florida transfer, by the way. She Ooh. got she got out of Gainesville, couldn't stand the smell. I've talked to her. That was the main reason. Um, and transferred to Florida State before last season. Anyway, she scored a goal against the Gators, uh, so that probably felt sweet, and then scored two more against the Owls, the lowly Owls, who had no chance on Sunday, the Rice Owls. And uh, Florida State now, they are now 4-0-2, uh, and they, are, they have outscored their opponents 15-0 to in the last three matches. Looks like the defending champs have uh, found their stride. So, uh, Beata Olsen. God, I hope I'm pray. I pray I'm saying that right. Um, if not, shout out. Zaxby's on us. Um, that uh, to just to Beata, not to any of you listeners, uh, but she's our uh, Zaxby's indescribably good, or mine anyway. Uh, player of the week. Surprise, Corey. We're not done. We're going to try to get through mm. the rest of these Renegade Express oh, questions. Oh boy, I'm going to trim them up though. C Noli Ten, what's up? He's been around uh, since 2019. Took advantage of the Buck deal. Uh, class of 2005 from West Palm Beach. Uh, same high school as Brooks Kepka, Travis Rudolph. Jordan Travis went to our rival high school. He's currently the lacrosse coach at Georgia Southern. No hard feelings about your lacrosse jokes on the ACC network, he says. 
Um, he doesn't want to see Mike overthink his coaching. He's not that concerned about uh, on-the-field stuff this season. He knows that we're not Bama, Georgia, Ohio State, as we kind of talked about the, the top 1%, if you will, the top earners. Uh, but he didn't see any other team this last week that we could not hang with. So his biggest concern is whether Mike can continue to trust his own process and coach at the highest level. Thoughts? Uh, well, you, you posted this uh, last week, C. Noli, and uh, I think we actually spoke to Mike after this question, and he mentioned that the next day in practice, or at one day in practice, they ran the same play that they ran against LSU where they fumbled the ball, that pitch. That was one of the first plays they ran in a situation during practice. So that probably should show you how much he, he believes in what he's trying to do and, and isn't too much inside of his head. So I, I think he's confident in who he is, and you know maybe he'll – play things a little bit more conservative in that situation, but I don't think he's going to, like, retool his entire approach, Corey. Do you? Uh, no, no. He he's he wouldn't be the head coach at Florida State if he let, uh, in my opinion, one not-so-great decision uh, completely dictate what he believe you know, dictate what he does and, and how he believes in himself. He's got a lot of confidence in who he is. Um, and that was, um, you know, if it's executed well, it's a walk-in touchdown. It just is, but he didn't. It wasn't, and it wasn't. And they almost lost the game because of it. But yeah, I don't. I don't get the impression that like I. I don't think he's stubborn, at least not publicly. Like I always thought Jimbo was. Like Jimbo would have defended that call to the hilt. Um, we don't know football. It's a walk-in touchdown, which is all true. Well, that's not true. We do know some football, but at the same time, there's also a risk versus reward element to it. And Norvell actually talked about it and said that he, you know, maybe going thinking twice about it, it wasn't worth the risk, and it clearly wasn't. Um, but that said, I, I do think that he believes in what he does, and I think. You know, it's going to be really interesting to monitor him with these fourth down decisions. Mm. He did he make one? Did they go for? Did they even have a fourth down, Aslan? I, I don't remember if they had a fourth down where they could have gone for it in the in the LSU game. Do you? I do. I, I have terrible recall. I don't even know what I had for dinner last night. So thanks for asking me. And making me last your Tinder date. Appreciate. Hey, look out! Look Ayo. out! Does she remember? <laughs> That's all I'm asking. Uh, so yeah, but I I think you know Norvell's still a young coach and. Um, and he's, he's going to learn as he goes. Like Jimbo made a bunch of, well, Jimbo's still making them, but Jimbo made a bunch <laughs> of mistakes when he first got the head coaching job. It's just what happens. Um, but I, you know, I think he truly believes in what he's doing and we all hope he's right. I mean, where would I look on this? When I go to a box score on ESPN, probably should have told me, probably go, oh, you went to the wrong one, Aslan. Um, yeah, I try to find fourth down conversion stats. Couldn't find it. Maybe team stats. Team stats. There we go. Fourth down efficiency. Florida was oh, uh, Florida State was zero for one against LSU. There you go. There you go. What was their fourth down? Am I? Oh, uh, we're, I'm an Pittman. idiot. Micah it Pittman. was the Micah Pittman throw. Yeah. Sorry guys, you can stop yelling at me. Yeah. I know half of you were just yelling. Well, at I know they went car. for one, but I didn't know if they went for another one. In my complete. Yeah. So that down. like, um, he, you know, I, again. All right. All right. Time's up. Time's sorry, up. Just because I looked sorry. it up doesn't mean you get sorry. more time. I just clarified sorry. it. My fault. My Our fault. guy Ralph Spartan 71 He was just uh, telling us uh, Mahalo. He's going to try to make it back out for the Clemson game. Maybe he is the lucky charm. His flight back to uh, Hawaii. He bumped into the men's golf team in Dallas as they were heading out to Arizona. So nice. They finished nice. third because of you, Ralph. Shout out. To yeah, you. man. Yeah, you turned it around for that program too, Ralph. You're doing some things, man. You're doing some things. Parker's How awesome is that that Ralph got to see that win? Incredible. That, that's, Coming that's all the way from Hawaii, happy. getting to see yeah. the Duquesne game, and then going out to New Orleans and getting to see that win, too, is awesome. Yeah. Parker said so. He's currently in Vietnam. Uh, stand uh -huh. up. Saigon, Hanoi, uh, let us know. Originally from Tallahassee, Old Florida High, uh, David Ross, Dean Palmer, Martin Mayhew, famous alums. Mm. There you go. Is it time to start an NIL fundraiser to bring Jordan Travis back next year, make him an offer he can't refuse? Probably because I don't know what we got behind him on the roster right now, and I don't know what they're recruiting, but certainly not nearly as talented as Jordan. So Let yourself dream, Aslan, that this team finishes, let's just say 9-3. and three. Okay. And Jordan and three. Travis stays they win a bowl healthy. Game. They're going to win a bowl game, so 10. Okay, there you 10. go. 10-3. Um, or 9-4. and four. Just they, they finish with at least nine wins. Okay. Jordan Travis plays every game. Has a really good year. It's like honorable Mitchell all ACC. He's probably not going to win first team, but he – and – then he comes back Ooh. for 2023. Ooh. I mean, you start to get a little tingly, like, okay, man, maybe this is the year they you can get, actually win a con win a get into the championship game. Like you go in the, the portal, the you ACC some, championship game. You grab some top dogs in the portal too. Not that these guys are slouches, but you can probably get top of the line. Like maybe you could pull the Jordan Addison kind of guy uh, if if Jordan has a really great season this year. Uh, next year in the portal, but yeah, there the sky's the limit. Then if he's if he plays as well as we think he's going to continue to, based on these two games that we've seen, 
Yeah, because another. that's what you wonder. If you have a if you have a question mark at quarterback heading into 2023, which right now you very well could, um, how are you going to attract any receivers to come when they don't know who's going to be throwing to them? That's that's a that's a delicate deal. Like you got like at least Jordan Travis had done enough the last month of last season that somebody like Johnny Wilson and Micah Pittman and Winston Wright would be like, okay, I can see myself in that offense. But if 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 you've got Tate or you're you're counting on AJ Duffy or you're counting on a transfer from somewhere, it might be a little hard, unless you're Caleb Williams is the transfer. It might be hard to convince other receivers to come play for him. And so yeah, that's it'll it'll be interesting. Stay healthy, Jordan. Uh, keep playing well, and then uh, we'll cross that bridge in Thanksgiving. But yeah, go ahead and start. Anybody listen to this? Collect your. Maybe we'll have a uh, live show where it's just all the money goes to Jordan Travis. Can we do that? I assume we can, right? That's not pay for play. He can show up. We'll say, look, man, if you just give us five minutes at the end of the show, we'll give you all the money that's been raised. Or we just want you to say yes, sir, and that'll be on my soundboard. Yeah. Are you? Hey, are you going to stay for twenty twenty three? Yes, sir. And yes, sir. And then there you go. There you go. It'll be worth it. FSU Robert, wake up. How good does it feel to have a team you can get excited about? Uh, valid concerns aside, I love that discussion has pivoted from how bad are we going to be to how good. P.S. Corey, never use a cough button. It's too much fun seeing Jeff get aggravated. Keep up the great work. That's uh, I, It's not, I can't, the, the stupid radio, the, 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 the studio that we go to for headlines, on the little, um, I don't know what you call it, man, an adapter? I don't know what those things are called that yeah, the controls interface. the volume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it has a cough button. But it when I push it, doesn't do anything. It just you just hear me just like I I think it makes it actually louder. I think it amplifies the cough. Maybe <laughs> do you that's hold what it, it down? means. Because some of yeah. you, you have to hold it down. You don't just push it in and let no, go. No, yeah, no, I hold it, it down, down, and I think uh, it amplifies the cough. That's probably what it means. It's like, hey, if you really want them to hear this cough, push this button. Um, but yeah, so uh, I point to Jeff. He's like, hey man, if you got to clear your throat, just point to me, and I'll close your mic. And every time I do it, he he acts like he doesn't understand what I'm asking. <laughs> so I end up coughing on the mic and. Pe blowing people's eardrums out. So I apologize, all you listeners that listen to both these shows. Yeah, but this is pretty cool. At least we've at least had two weeks, three weeks of no, two weeks. I mean, after Duquesne, I wasn't. You know, I mean, listen, they they dominated a team they were supposed to dominate, which is to be commended at a certain degree yeah. for what we've been uh, enduring. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're it's it's cool that we've had ten days or so to think about how good can this team be, other than all right, man, like you know, they'll just that's six wins still in in sight. Um, yeah. I'm terribly disappointed if they only win seven games at this point right now. That's how drunk I am right now. God, man, I love it. I love this. I love this Aslan. Yeah. I love it. And man, if they could win Friday night and what that would, I mean, that would be, I mean, just think about what you're feeling. You're three and zero with Boston college coming to town. And then you really start to get giddy that this team might be four and zero, like four and zero with playing a very, very big game, like a, an actual big game, not a big game. Cause Miami's in town or Florida's in town. You'd be 4-0, probably playing another undefeated team. You'd both be ranked. I mean, that would be... I mean, I don't think game day is coming for Florida State-Wake Forest. Uh, but that would be an enormous game. And I would love to see uh, what, what Wake Forest plays like in a game where the other side really takes them seriously and treats it like a game of the century, which Florida State definitely would if they're 4-0 and Wake is 4-0. And they're playing a team they haven't... It seems like they haven't beaten in forever. You so, yeah, man, you start to get giddy, but, man, this is such a big one on, on Friday night. If you can find a way, I don't care if it's 30 to 29 yeah. or 2 to 0, if you can find a way to win that game, what that would do just for the, the whole fan base and for the team itself would just be enormous. Yeah, they're still in win small mode, everybody. They're still in win small mode. I think her name is Heather and Miss Webb Silver Chief. Uh, she just wanted mm -hmm. to apologize for not being one of the lady listener representatives uh, the other week in New Orleans. Yeah. Uh, it was raining really heavy. It was. Uh, we true. get it. Um, you know, just uh, she wants to shout out the guys that made great plays on special teams: White Rector, DJ Lundy, and of course Shaheem Brown. Uh, indeed, shout out to them. That's great to see those guys engage, making plays. That and matter. Master Mono. Don't forget our man Master Mono. Those were two beautiful punts. Yeah, man. Knowles underscore no underscore one. Although I think the no is like for number. Uh, wake up. What's bigger versus Louisville? Weather the storm on a raucous Friday with a Kentucky bourbon infused crowd or Make Malik Cunningham one-dimensional. I'm always about weathering the storm. You got to weather the storm. Always, always. And you're not going to make Malik Cunningham one-dimensional. Nobody's done that yet. Like you just, you. I don't. I don't think you have the horses out wide. Clemson might be able to. Maybe Georgia could. Florida State, I don't think, has quite the athleticism on the edge to make or at linebacker in general to make Malik Cunningham one-dimensional. That guy's just a. It's like saying make Lamar Jackson one-dimensional. He ain't Lamar Jackson. 
but he's a reasonable facsimile. That guy, he's I, explosive man. He's he can explosive. really run, man. He had he had the forty three yard touchdown run, but there was another run he had. I think it was like third and six, where he he made a guy miss in the backfield, put his foot in the ground, and got ten yards. It was just a great great run, man. He can he's I think he's a better runner than Travis. And you guys know what I think about Jordan as a runner, but I think Malik might be a little more gifted than him. Chuck MacGyver Norris Jr. over under tackles Jarvis Brownlee four and a half really over. good number by the way because I think he had six against Syracuse four against UCF so I think here's my thought on it and Jarvis I love you you, you gave a lot of you played a lot man you played like 99 percent of the snaps last year um you're also kind of the reason Florida State didn't go to a bowl but whatever <laughs> I'm not holding that against you um they they know who he is and they know maybe what he's good at and what he isn't, and they are going to go at him a lot. I just, you don't bring over Johnny Wilson, Micah Pittman. You don't have Pokey Wilson. Um, maybe do span. You don't bring these guys over. They're going to put Jarvis Brownlee on an island, and they're going to see if he can make plays. They're, they're, that's just what they're going to do. So we'll see if it if it works. It's going to be an interesting, interesting battle there. I'll say the over. I'll say the over. Yeah, I think but that's my point is I think there's going to be enough guys that catch balls on him that he's going to have to, he's going to bring him to the ground after like a, you know, 9 or 12 or 25 yard gain. Seminal G13 offers a narrative based question which I'll have to punt on. Uh, appreciate the question though, but just, you know, we're short on time here, friend. Um, since we've established that we can throw the ball well, what are your projections versus Louisville? Will we be back establishing run dominance or will we continue to let Jordan play his game? Thanks for all you do. And if you listen to the podcast and haven't subscribed for just a dollar, what are you doing? Mm. Go Knowles. Yep. Yep. I think they're going to they're gonna run the ball until Louisville proves that they can stop the run. I mean, and then they'll be totally happy letting Jordan play his game. But I, I think they're going to have success running the ball against Louisville. I just do. Yeah, I, and I think Louisville thinks that too. And so I think Louisville is going to do everything it can to make sure they don't. But that's, again, like we talked about at the top of the show, I think that's going to open itself up for some – uh, the potential, if you make them, to execute them, to have some really big plays down the field. Um, receivers got to win one-on-one -on -one battles, and Travis got to put it on them and see it. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, that's you know that that they Florida State's always going to try to run first, and I think they can run on Louisville much better than they did against LSU. But I, again, I think Louisville's going to try to make sure they don't. So it might have to be another big game through the air for Jordan. FGC, he might have his first three hundred yard passing game, Aslan. I'm waiting for he hadn't it. Had, he hadn't had one yet. I'm maybe maybe Friday it. night's the time. Uh, we haven't even talked about the white jer uniforms. I mean, they used oh, him and right. Jarrett to unveil it, yeah. a former Louisville guy, so maybe there's a little yeah. extra. I like them. I like them. Uh, I, I like white. Um, I like white. White's a clean look. Um, it's somewhat. I mean, I don't know. The black with the garnet. I'm not anti-black uniforms. I think the softball teams wearing black uniforms that I've actually tweeted about the fact that I like them because it was just like black and gray is all they had, but – when you put the blotch of like the garnet just starts looking purplish against black and it just, just doesn't look right to me. Um, I, I'm fine with the white. I just don't know about making it a production. I, I don't like that. Like, okay, go ahead and announce it the way you usually do. But I guess it's an off week and you have to kind of drum up a little bit of uh, sauce and, and juice in your in your fan base. So um, let's just hope it doesn't you know end up being comes in order punch line of a joke to losing the louisville or something you know the like, white out yeah um yeah you're not supposed to wear white after labor day right yeah, yeah. not the rule so that's that that there's my there's the lead to my column if they lose <laughs> gonna blame it on the uniforms uh fgcu noel uh, from cape coral famous people seth petrozelli he was on ultimate fighter knocked out kimbo mm -hmm. slice that's true crazy uh, and mike zanino race catcher uh, oh, question yeah. doesn't involve uh, the football game, but rather, would you rather beat Miami every year and go 30% against Florida or vice versa? Down here in South Florida, Miami fans are worse than UF. Love the show. Well, you'd say that, though, if you lived in Gainesville. You'd say the opposite. Or Orlando just around them. or Jacksonville or Tampa. Yeah. Where you're there's you're really just not around them fans. more. I, I, think, I think the answer is clearly Florida. You'd yes. rather win every game against Florida. Plus, it's the it's also at least when you're losing to Miami, I'm I'm taking a page out of Michael Offord's book here. At least you're losing to another ACC team, right? By the way, Miami and A and M this weekend, man. Yeah, big. What time. if Jimbo loses that game? Woo! I feel like back Miami's got some better players than App State, Jimbo. <laughs> I think they might. But I'll tell you what about I didn't. Did you watch any of the Miami game? 
No, just the, saw the box score. Yeah, they they were they were seven to three with like a minute to go in the second quarter, and they were being booed. Like yeah. the not that many people were there, but the people <laughs> that were there were booing. And I, that's not a joke. I mean, it was I mean it was a joke, but there was like twenty two twenty four thousand people there, but they were getting booed. They had three points with like two minutes to go in in the in the second quarter. Like that, the offense looked bad. Van Dyke was getting sacked and uh, just was out of rhythm. And then they hit a big play right before the half and then just kind of rolled from there. And the defense must have played well. But uh, they, they, they were sluggish and sloppy for, for a good half of football. So, again, even them, like, you know, they're, they're beatable. Even in that place, they're going to be beatable. But still, the answer to the question is Florida. Uh, Knowles 2113, Asian, been listening to the pod for a while. What, Must, Asian? Is that yeah, what you said? Spell my name wrong. Uh, oh, okay. I thought he was saying his uh, ethnicity. No. No, Let's, yeah, we don't want to get into that, folks. No you don't have to do box. that for us. Yeah, no census yeah. box on here. Must yeah. have missed the meaning behind user donating money and you going bananas. What is the revenue used for? NIL, war chant revenue, uh, my Tinder dates. And I go bananas because people um, are giving us money to talk about Florida State sports, which is bonkers. Well, and I think the the genesis of it never we never asked for it like i've said many times We've we never didn't know that was a go thing look look at the tape we have never at any point ever asked. We, we, and honestly ever. we didn't even know it was a thing yeah. we started doing these when and during covid right i think so yeah and i think there were some very nice people that knew that you know an, an outlet like us that didn't have any sports to talk about or write about and talk about uh for months on end uh might not be doing great and so we did these live shows and people unbeknownst to us could actually donate money. And it just kind of, it kind of went from there, but we, um, it's, it's every week we're just, uh, gobsmacked. At least I am, I am. by, uh, how the generosity of people. Um, but yeah, it goes to my, uh, car payments. Yeah. <laughs> Tennis. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. It goes to the, it goes to the kitty. It goes to the fun. So then we can, uh, travel. We can we put can on s- cool shows and yeah, travel can, and, you know, send Aslan on a jet stuff. plane to Louisville to go cover Louisville. Otherwise you're just going to have Corey there filming the press conference on his phone. Don't need that. And it would have tapped out after five minutes. So oh, absolutely. And we can, uh, and it, it also goes, I mean, this between us right now, it goes to the Jordan, Jordan Travis yeah. slash Travis Hunter <laughs> fund going into next season. All right. We're almost there. Corey, I can see the light. Okay. Tell tennis right. ump. Uh, wake up. What do you attribute the amazing improvement in Jordan Travis as a passer? Uh, is it the summer work, tow cars effect? Uh, I guess during the game, Greg McElroy mentioned, or not during the game, but on his radio show, mentioned that last year Jordan Travis would take off running at the first sign of pressure. Now he hangs in there, keeps his vision downfield, hits receivers, uh, while Jaden Daniels was doing the opposite. Thanks, as always, for all that you guys do. Could it be as simple as just having better receivers? Well, that's definitely part of it. That's a big part of the pie chart. Big part of the pie chart. I like when say. you don't trust, like playing quarterback is so much about trust. Um, and, and Jameis had a, Jameis was really bad. He was really struggling for the first half on Sunday. And then really the fourth quarter, he looked like, he looked like Pitt Jameis. I mean, he was just making throws all over the field. Of course it was against the Falcons because why wouldn't it be? Great day in Atlanta sports, by the way. They blow that game and then the Braves blow a game in the ninth uh, to the Mariners now a game and a half back. But I still got that World Series ring I can shine. You do. You do. But, uh, but Jameis, Jameis so much trusted his receivers to be where they were supposed to be. And not only to, be, not, not only to get open and beat the person that was covering them and go make a play, but be where they were supposed to be. He threw so many passes um, before they had broken, before they had you made their move, in anticipatory throws. And I just think when you believe in your receivers and you're not wondering, okay, can Keyshawn get open in this spot? Can can Malik McLean get off that? Like, and look, McLean might end up being something. We'll see. But uh, you know, the 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 receivers have gotten so much better. I think that it just gives you a little more confidence to throw to a spot, to believe, or to throw to Pittman four yards short of the line, knowing that he can he's going to catch it on the run and put his nose up in there and get the first down. I think all that matters. Plus, yeah, he just I think experience playing a lot matters. Just it just does. I you you just. You, you get more confidence the more you do something. And last year was a huge benefit for him in the games he was able to play and finish. Seminole 3 2 4 4 4, Panama City. Uh, Jason Whitaker, Burt Reed, uh, hometowns. Uh, two quick oh, questions. Yeah. Uh, who's going to be greats. starting? Burt Reed. Yeah. Who's going to be the starting quarterback for Clemson when they come to town? Uh, has Coach Norvell acknowledged the noticeable absence of plays involving our big receivers in the red zone? That is like guys like Johnny. Deuce and Kentron, large bodies. Although I think 
think Malik's taller than them. No, he just said that they like that guy and they throw it to him again. Uh, it doesn't really matter his size. Um, and listen, I don't, I don't. I mean, does Johnny Wilson catch that ball that fourth down against LSU? Probably. Um, and then I don't know. I think DJ did maybe good enough to hold on at least for one week. But I, I, again, I looked at the box score. I didn't watch Furman, Clemson, uh, Klubnik didn't have anything all that sparkling on his sheet either. But uh, we'll see when they play a relatively game ACC opponent how DJ looks. But I, I think I'll still say Cade, Klubnik, the freshman for Clemson. They cool. got to figure it out before NC State, which I think is the same day that Florida State plays Wake. So, oh, two huge games in the ACC potentially. That you could have two ACC matchups with two undefeated teams. Aslan, let's go. You could have two top ten teams and two top fifteen teams all playing each other. The ACC, man. But I think they need to know by then um, who who the if that kid's going to be the quarterback, he needs to be in place. You don't want to be you don't want to be making a change in the middle of the NC State game or the middle of the Florida State game. Um, so you know, I, DJ certainly played well enough against Furman. He threw a pick. But he was also really good in the first half, and his numbers were excellent. Um, and after having a really good second half against Georgia Tech, so I think for now, man, that's their guy. I think it's going to take uh, three quarters of horrible football for them to go for, for them to go permanently uh, with the freshman. They got the week off, Clemson. Then they play Louisiana Tech, Wake, yep. NC State. Um, Boston College, and then they have us. Gosh, it's so, so I think far Wake, away. I mean, I, I think Wake is the – Wake will be the – if he's yeah, if DJ yeah. is still playing against Wake, DJ will be playing against Florida State. Uh, I think. No, well, unless that's, he – well, that's true. If he's horrible against NC State, then they make a move. But do you have your guy make a first start against – what is that going to be now at that point? 6-0 and Florida State? Hmm. Number seven in the country? You want a freshman making a uh, their first start ever in that snake pit? I don't know. Uh, Jimbo's underscore Christmas underscore tree. Mm. Uh, bless Harris done for the year. What true freshman offensive lineman uh, do you see getting more reps and possibly not getting a red shirt? I would have said uh, Julian Armella simply because he's more uh, heralded as a recruit. But when I asked specifically about him and Lloyd Willis having the opportunity with bless being out, Mike Norvell offered unsolicitedly Jalen early. So when the head football coach brings up a guy's name, and it was like he's a really talented kid. I will, uh, I'll go with that. Uh, I'll say Jalen early, and then he also asked about. We've heard so much about Dennis Briggs this off season. Yeah, he's been pretty quiet. What's up with him? I don't know. I don't watch Trench play all that quite closely. Uh, but it doesn't really matter, man. Jared Verse wreaking havoc. I'll take that. <laughs> I think it. I think it matters. I mean, you, Dennis Briggs is one of your three defensive ends. You need him to do something. Him and McClendon. Um, again, big big days for them. I. You know, I know they like Briggs out wide at a defensive end. I just think I don't know why they haven't played him as much. I would play him in the interior in the pass downs and get Cooper off the field and maybe get Lovett off the field more than they have. But I would I, I like Dennis Briggs inside, like in the Demarcus Walker role um, when it's when it's a passing down, when it's an obvious passing down. He is a big, strong kid. Um, he's not all, he doesn't seem to be all that twitchy and fast. And I think, you, but you got one of those guys in verse, and maybe you have another guy in McClendon. We'll see. He still hasn't done enough yet. But yeah, I mean, I think uh, Briggs is something they, somebody they talk about a lot and talk about like he's Keir Thomas. Well, let's, it's time now. Like, it's time now, especially this week. Isn't Louisville the team that knocked him out of the season? Yeah. yeah. With a kind of a dirty block. Yeah. Let's remember, so, he's also coming off an injury, too, man. So, but it was a year ago, though. Like, I he, know, I think but... he's fully healthy. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that suck it up. I, I mean, I do think he's fully healthy. Even before he had gotten hurt, he had never accomplished a ton. So now's the time. Like these next three or four games, I want, I, I'm with him. I want to see something out of Dennis Briggs because they talk about him like he's special. I think they've even used the word special to describe him. And so far, we haven't seen much special out of him. Um, now, now is kind of the time for that to happen. He's played 57 reps. 42 of them have either been over the offensive tackle or outside the offensive tackle. So he has not played on the inside nearly as much as uh, Corey kind of had hoped. I would have thought point. they would have done that more. Uh, I guess that's if he. So that means 15 times he has, though, right? Uh, 14. Yeah, no, there's there's a they have 57 reps. So there's some uh, discrepancy here. There's a couple or they. It doesn't add up to 57. It adds up oh, to uh, right. 56. So. Because I would like, you know, Verse, McClendon, and him all on the field together in like third and ten, especially with somebody like Cunningham on the field. Yeah. And, you know, you know, guys that can run, and they're, they're going to face a few of them. Yeah. Right now, Briggs is graded out at 58 overall on defense. So, What about McClendon? Where is he? 
Uh, I don't know, Corey. We got to go. It's about an hour. Winter Haven. Are you Noel. looking at the page? I was just curious. Uh, I got to bounce back to something else. I love oh, Corey, sorry. everybody. I just it's trying to get you know. I just want everybody to get their question read. Right. Uh, I apologize. All right. Yeah. Win- Winter Haven. Noel just wants to ask about Julian Armella burning his red shirt. Uh, I mean, they they can use four games. It's so remember they they can use any four games they want. They can save them for. You know, Georgia Tech, Louisiana, Florida, and then the bowl game or ACC championship game. Uh, hmm. But I don't know. I guess I would think he might be on deck. But, again, they like Jalen Early a lot too, so we'll see how that goes. Now, I would have thought I, – I, I still think Armella would be the guy if they had to roll out a true freshman, but that's just speculation. Okay. Oh, so you're so quick on that. I was going to try to pull up McClendon, but look at you wrapping yourself up quick. DB Chief. Hey, fellas, I was a marching chief during the lost decade. Now I live in Daytona Beach. Xavier Lee, Cyrus Fagan, and Sebastian Janikowski uh, play their high school ball out there. That's right. Should we be concerned with the lack of production on the ground against LSU? Nah. Nah. Why live your life concerned? Just, you know, embrace the win. Embrace the win. Um, no. Let's see what LA, let's see what Louisville looks like. Because the beauty of that game against LSU uh, is, number one, I, I think they were clearly the better team. And it was ridiculous that it was close at the end. But, um, you know, they last year when somebody took the runaway, and not many teams did, but when they did, that was a wrap. Go ahead and punt. Start warming up both your legs there, Master Mono, because you're going to be punting soon. But now you have the ability, even if you're not running the ball well, to still move the ball and score points. It would seem anyway for through two games. So that's a positive. And you aren't going to face, other than Clemson, I was going to say Florida because, it, man, it looked like Florida was manhandling Kentucky in the first half uh, of that game. The defensive line was. But in the second half, Kentucky kind of just ran through them. So I really think Clemson, maybe NC State, are the only defensive lines left that can do to you what LSU did to you. So if 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 they only run for 130 yards and their running backs average like three yards a carry against Louisville and Boston College, then, yeah, you're, there's a reason to be concerned. But let, let's wait to see if that happens first. We're really not close. We have like five more. Oh, just, geez. All right. It's like Hydra. We get one done and it just another head mm. pops up. Uh, Renegade 21. Uh, he graduated same year as Lizzie. Uh, T. Lizzie. Tom Lang. Shout out. Oh, all right. Nice. Palm Coast, Florida. He's from Flagler County. Question. Do you think Adam Fuller and the defense can make adjustments so that we don't see these final drive end of game collapses where we allow a team to go the length of the field to go for the win with less than two minutes left? I sure hope. I don't know. No, no, no idea if he can or not. Um, you know, been the Miami game last year they did. The North Carolina game they kind of did because North Carolina took twenty-seven minutes to go down the field. Um, like they were like milking the lead. It was bizarre. Like they didn't know who led and who didn't. Um, Boston College, you know, they picked yeah. off a pass at the end of that game. So they they did do it a few times last year. It's not all the time. It's just you know the ones where they don't do it. You know, the one I mentioned about Brownlee earlier and then obviously the LSU game, those really stand out. But they got better about it after the Jacksonville State game, for sure. Delicious Crab. Hello, Aslan and Corey. Spelled both of our names wrong, I think, on purpose. Uh, so, oh. How dirty Why do you think? Why would you think that? I don't know, just because he spelled yours with a K. Obviously, everyone knows that you're not Corey oh, Mangum. Oh, okay, right, right. Uh, yeah, that's right. I'm not Corey Mangum. He's a crab. He's got a weird sense yeah. of humor. Um. Best player from my hometown of Tallahassee was me. I should have won the Heisman, uh, if not for never playing college ball. Mm, me too, buddy. Me too. At least I went pro in basketball. I declared for the NBA draft. How dirty do you think Brian Kelly is as a coach? Are you worried other teams like Louisville, NC State, Miami will be hoping to end Jordan's career? <laughs> oh, that's why I was like, I thought he meant dirty as in like recruiting. recruiting. Yeah, no. But you can't even be dirty anymore, right? Um, I... I can, I, see think Brian ordering, Kelly, I can see him ordering the code red. I can see him ordering the code red. Yeah, I was going to say, I think Brian Kelly made it very clear. Let's uh, <sighs> let's try to hurt this kid. Not hurt him like be cheap shots, but let's slam him to the ground when we get him. He cannot keep running around on us. Um, make him feel you know, us. I, yeah, make him feel you. Uh, and Mickey used to do that too when they'd play a mobile quarterback. He, he said the whole point is like, if they want to run, you have to make them regret running. Um, so that's that's the line that coaches have used forever with the mobile quarterbacks. And Florida State, I can promise you, is going to try to make Malik Cunningham feel them. So he quits running on third and six for first downs. And that gets annoying. So, you know, you do land your whole body weight on him occasionally. I'm not trying to separate shoulders, but you want to make him feel you. Um, 
I don't know. Do you think Brian Kelly's no. like, I don't think he's telling, he's not putting bounties out. No, no, um, no. But man, Louisville went after Briggs' knees last year. I certainly wouldn't put his past Dave Doran. Let me, let me say that right there. Maybe Dave Doran's dirty. There you go. <laughs> well, apparently I think Louisville took out, apparently took out Marvin in 2022. So that's two years in a row. Louisville got a defensive lineman from, so maybe we need to ask is, is Scott Satterfield dirty. Um, yeah, yeah, really. And how about return the favor one time? You're not going at them cheap. Oh, you don't do that. When they go you, low, hey, we go they, high. Court. You go when high, go low, exactly right. High. But still, exactly. But on a one chop you go block. Low, on a chop yeah. block, yeah. One of you go low and the other person goes high. You high low them. I think this is Ranye. He used to go by GA Knowles 86 on the old network. Wake up, guys. Quick question. When you all refer to play calling duties, it's always just Coach Norvell and never really talking about Coach Atkins. Does Atkins not call any plays or have a, a say-so as the OC? We don't Correct. know exactly, right? That's well, no, as far as the say-so, I definitely think he has a say-so. I think, you know, Atkins' work when it comes to the offense, as far as the coordinating part of it, quote-unquote, is from Sunday to Friday, or in this case, you know, Monday to the next Thursday. But when the game starts, it's Norvell that's got the sheet that's calling the plays. That's, yeah. that's what he does. That's what he did at Memphis. Um, Shout-out to Kenny Dillingham for putting it on Eastern, Eastern Washington. Bamboo, Good job, baby. Kenny. Yep, yep. Let's see what you can do against a... Well, anyway, but, uh, but yeah, I think, but Atkins, I think, you know, Atkins has a say, this isn't just a title. It's not a fake title. Like he he is the offensive coordinator. And I think from the the other six days, he's helping put together the game plan. He's, he's giving ideas. He's telling Norvell what he thinks works, what he thinks doesn't work. He's breaking down the film. He's seeing tendencies, all the stuff that a coordinator would do. It's just during the game. It's the other guy that's calling the plays. And I'm sure I, I would like to know. In fact, that's a really good question to ask Mike Aslan if you get a chance um, this week, which you will, because I'll be up here um, in the great state of Georgia. Um, that uh, what what is the communication like, and is it any different with him calling the plays? Like, who's in his ear? Is it Tony Tokars up in the? Uh, I think Tokars is in the in the box, right? I think so. Yeah. And then Atkins is on the field. What what's their communication in between series, or even in between plays? Do they do they give? Um, ideas or suggestions or is Norvell kind of just on his own yeah uh I was gonna say something somewhat profound but we don't have time I can't remember it D Spence Yo, he's right. from Apopka Zach Grinky, Renardo Green hometowns uh <laughs> kicking game Sammy Smith I think yeah. Sammy Smith is from the great Sammy Smith is from Apopka too yeah uh major concerns kicking game will it cost us a game or two I predict many close games hope Fitz doesn't give one away like Notre Dame last year still love my Knowles well, he didn't get hey, him to no. overtime. That's come not on, fair. he got him to overtime. Yeah, that's not fair. That's not fair. He got him to overtime. Yeah. He I, got him to overtime. I know uh, Syracuse still has that Zmit 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 uh, kicker that's been there for ten years. I feel like mm. I I don't feel overly confident with our kicking game, like beyond thirty five yards, thirty eight yards. Yeah, it's uh, you know, you wonder if it if if it Friday night if Florida State is if it's twenty six to twenty six with. 48 seconds left and you have a fourth and four at the Louisville 30. What are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Like, you know, one of the wor- one of the Willie, one of the worst in game decisions I thought that Willie had during his tenure was the wake forest game in the rain where I think it was like fourth and four, four. it was, it wasn't fourth and 30. It was fourth and something. And he tried a field goal with the Guayo that, the whole world knew he wasn't going to make. It was like 52 yards in the rain. Um, he had to call a timeout to avoid a delay a game, like all this stuff that happened. And you just knew that kid wasn't going to make it. And, and I, you know, look, kicker. Yeah. yeah, Fitz, exactly. Well, he did that. Yeah, that's exactly right. So Fitzgerald's not to that point yet. It was just one miss and he did make the next one. So let's give him a bit to, to before we, we throw in the towel. But, you know, I don't think the way he kicked that ball in the dome, I don't know that you feel really confident with him in a in a tight moment from distance. So he's got to earn that again. And, it, you know, that's why the head coach gets paid a lot of money is he's supposed to figure out who he should have confidence in and if this kid's going to make it or not. I think part of me thinks that the next time Fitzgerald goes out there for a 48-yarder, he's just going to be like, well, here goes nothing. Nobody's expecting me to make this. There's no pressure on me at all. I'm not Dustin Hopkins. Yeah. I'm not an All-American. Like, people are just hoping I get this thing airborne. It gets It gets there. So maybe maybe he'll be able to kick a little more uh, carefree, but yeah, that's that that is when it comes to these this football team, uh, that is a that is a concern is that you don't feel great about the kicker and you are going to be in some close games 
where a great kicker would help you immensely. Four minutes, 18 seconds left, down by two at the Wake Forest 37 first and 10. Cam runs for two yards. So where are they now? It's 22-20. Florida State's down by two. Yeah, okay, Third and right. eight, pass complete to Trey McKitty for two yards. You call a timeout. It is now fourth and six at the Wake Forest 33. Ricky Aguayo misses the field goal. With how much time left? Two minutes and 13 seconds. Yeah. But you got three and out. You got the ball back with uh, 30 seconds left. That's and right. And then Blackman let him right down the field, and they won the game? Did not happen. That is that what happened? Oh, that's right. It was something else. Yeah. All right, we made it. Last one. Uh, since Corey did a fairly good job here in the last seven minutes of going quick, uh, Derek McClendon, 58 snaps so far, uh, 55 of them outside the tackle, two of them over the tackle. Um, okay. One play at the B gap. That doesn't add up to 58, though, but that's pro football focus. is math for you, everybody. MCC. No, I wanted his grade. Oh, overall so far, yeah. 67. Okay. All right. That's not, that's not shabby. Yeah. That's not terrible. Uh, MCC, Mac Knoll, wake up. Marietta, Georgia. Peter Warwick Jr. is from here. So is Sharif Abdul Rahim. Yeah, that's right. Uh, if winning brings four- and five-star athletes, where do our 23 and 24 recruiting classes have to be ranked for us to get a chance against Bama and Georgia in 25, 26, 27, 28? Well, high. <laughs> Pretty high. I mean, top 10, I think. Yeah. God, are they playing Georgia and Alabama twice each? I think so. Yeah, home and homes, right? Yeah. Aslan, we got to get that taken off the schedule, don't we? Well, hey, man, I love I'm, Athens. Athens is a great college I've town. I've never been, they, man. So I've never been there, man. What You go. can't do that to yourself. Wanna Why go. are you doing that to yourself? Go. NC State, Wake Forest, they stay scheduling Gardner-Webb. And they, they love it. They get to bowls every year. Wow, you don't need to, you don't, especially in the era of the playoff. If you're good enough, you'll face one of them in the first or second round anyway. There is no need at all to fa play a non-conference game like that. None. Because you can't, uh, you know, you lose to Alabama 38-9. to You're not going to work yourself back into consideration. If you're an SEC team, you can. But if you're in the ACC, you can't. So there's, they just need to get those games off the books. I don't care how you do it. Just get it done. I mean, it's recruiting is going to be important, but so is nutrition, supplementation. Mm -hmm. yep. These guys are just, they still look just from a different planet. There's yeah. just, and they yeah. move. They uh, move like differently. Too, certain yeah. laws of physics don't apply to them. Cool that Georgia loses an entire NFL roster off its defense and has given up three points in two games. They're averaging 1.5 points per game on defense. Guess it That's wasn't fine. Dan Lanning after all, huh? Yeah, maybe it was the players in, uh, in Kirby. Yeah. yeah. All right, good stuff. Uh, we're done. We'll see. We're you done. Up. We did it. Yeah, only an hour. It was only and 20 an hour and again. forty minutes. Okay, awesome. So tomorrow will be what a twenty-minute show? Probably. We'll have Tom Lang on, possibly, and make it a Tuesday. Oh, there you with go. Tom, nice. give us yep. give, give some juice to the show. Uh, again, later tonight, seven o'clock. We usually do them seven thirty, but seven o'clock because it is a weird Friday night week game uh, in the coop with Robert Cooper, Jeff Cameron show coming up one to three o'clock. Our live show will be Wednesday six. Corey, thinking six? Wednesday? Live? Yeah, six. Wednesday. You got it. Absolutely. All right. Stay connected to WarChant.com. Practice updates, footage, interviews, all that over at WarChant.com, probably around uh, 1130 or so when practice wraps up. For Corey, I'm Aslan. Thank you for listening to Wake Up WarChant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill.